Oh boy, it's something Apple related. Can you believe it? Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode, yes, we're going to be taking a look at a modified version of macOS 10.5 that promises improved performance and functionality on old PowerPC G4 and G5 Max. It's known as Sorbet Leopard and it's completely free to download, which is of course really awesome. And it says it's gonna bring faster boot time, smoother animations, updated applications. There's even an entire app store that comes pre-installed with this thing that contains links to a bunch of PowerPC compatible applications, which is pretty cool. Almost as cool as our video sponsor for today, so thanks Linode for making this one possible. Now it's worth noting that this is not the only project like this. In fact, there is a successor project of sorts called Shuriken, which is a modified version of 10.4 Tiger with the same goals, and that's something we'll have to explore in a future video. But for now, let me quickly take you through the installation process and we'll take a look at what Sorbet Leopard here has to offer. First, let's talk system requirements. So Sorbet Leopard needs at least a G4 or G5 Mac. You need to have 512 megabytes of RAM and 16 gigabytes of available hard disk space. Just to show you the spec sheet of this Mac, this is an iBook G4 and it's got a 1.33 gigahertz processor in it and 1.25 gigabytes of memory. And from what I've seen, the preferred way of installing this is just making a separate partition on your Mac to install the operating system to. Because Sorbet Leopard comes on a DMG file that you have to restore using disk utility to a, a partition on your drive. So if you wanted to make this the sole operating system on a Mac, you're gonna have to use another computer to prep the drive. Everything you need is on Macintosh garden though it's also been mirrored to the internet archive as well i will have both of those links down below and i've already went ahead and uh let's open up disk utility here to show you i have already not only created the partition but i have uh restored the image to this sorbet partition because it took about two hours off camera so i just did that so we don't have to wait for it while i'm in the middle of shooting the video here but what you would have to do is partition the drive here and go to the new partition you just create and go to the restored tab and select the dmg as the source and then drag the partition here as the destination and let it do its thing and then we can go into system preferences here and go to the uh, startup disk option right here and we are going to restart on the Sorbet partition. You can see it actually identifies itself as macOS 10.5.9, and that's uh, they're, they're doing to kind of indicate like, oh, this is the final version of Leopard. You know, of course it's not, 10.5.8 is, but I thought that was kind of clever. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna restart. And by the way, this is the first time we're booting into this partition on this computer because I did all of my testing on my other iBook G4 uh, off camera. So yeah, it will play the 10.5 slash 10.6 intro video, which of course I'll have to mute because the music is copyrighted. So we're gonna go with US and US keyboard layout and we'll say, no, we don't already own a Mac. We're not gonna transfer anything, even though that's a lie, I own many Macs. And we're not gonna lie in with an Apple ID. I don't even know if that would work uh, with this old setup wizard here. And we're going to do Command Q to skip the registration. And we'll leave it in Pacific time. That's fine. And don't forget to register. Yeah, I wonder what Apple's going to do if you register ten, a non existent version of macOS 10.5. And the first thing I'm going to demo right off the bat is the Sorbet App Store. So you see, they've actually taken the old iOS App Store icon and they've modified it a bit. And App Store is a little bit misleading. I mean, it is like an App Store, but really this is just a web page that has a bunch of links to Macintosh Garden pages where you can download the program. So it's not like everything's contained in this one program. So like if I want to download, let's go to, you know, games here maybe. And yeah, Minecraft Power PC Edition. I mean, it's definitely nicely laid out. I mean, it kind of looks like Apple's website a little bit with the bar up here. So you can go to games here. We'll get Minecraft Power PC Edition. And you click here and it will take you to that page on Macintosh Garden. The only downside is you can't go back because they've they've disabled the address bar and the controls and everything. I wonder if we can like right click. Yeah, that, that's what you have to do. Uh, you got Flux here. Wait, really? Flux supports Power PC? I guess it's an older version or something. Yeah, 2008. Gosh, Flux is that old. Jeez, I mean, 2008 is that old. Gosh, because yeah, PowerPC Max were still like used, uh, I mean, heavily back then. I mean, OS 10 Leopard had just come out a year prior, so they, they were still definitely in use. 
candy bar. I actually have an old G5 tower that's got that on it. When I got it from the Freebus owner, he like themed the entire system. It was pretty nice. And yeah, you know, you can go to internet here, download one of the web browsers they've got. You got FileZilla, Transmission. So yeah, definitely really nice. I mean, like I said, it's not an app store in the way that you would think of like it manages your, your downloads and updates and everything, but it's nice that it just consolidates a bunch of popular PowerPC apps. Uh, just right in this nice front end interface so yeah definitely props for that so we'll close out of that and the really cool thing about sorbet leopard is all the extras that it comes with because yeah you could just leave it like this right but you can also theme the operating system there's actually a high sierra theme that actually does a pretty good job at making this old iBook G4 look like it's running Mac OS Sierra or High Sierra, which is kind of nuts. So if we go into applications here, we'll go to the Sorbet Tools folder. And there's a bunch of stuff in here, not just appearance, but they've got like some demos, they've got some modifications you can do to the dock and the finder, they've got some maintenance stuff. We'll start with appearance because that's gonna be probably the most exciting. There is an OS X mountain lion theme that we could install and uninstall. Uh, uh, so if you wanted to do that, you could do that. We're just going to go right into the high, I almost said high leopard, the high Sierra one in this video, because it is my favorite. The only downside is this is a permanent theme. There's no uninstall folder in here like we've got in the mountain lion one. So this is like a permanent thing. So I guess just watch this video and then decide if you want to run this. But yeah, it uses leopard rebirth. That's how the whole thing functions. And the first thing you have to do is run this little script that changes the version number to 10.5.8 temporarily because without it, Leopard Rebirth will not run because it will say, oh, this is only for 10.5.8. Even though that is what we're technically running, they've modified it to say 10.5.9. So we have to run this. It gives you 10 seconds once the terminal window opens up here. It'll give you 10 seconds. We have to enter our password first. Let's do that. Then it will give us 10 seconds to run this application. And uh, now we can hit continue. And we'll hit continue again. Agree and install. And there we go. It'll do everything for us except for the pictures, which we'll have to install afterwards. And here we are. You can see the dock is looking pretty amazing. We've got the flat menu bar up here. And when you install Leopard Rebirth, it also installs another app store. There's a new icon in the dock. We'll open that up in a minute here. Um, so that might kind of confuse you if you're like, wait, there's another app store now. But uh, yeah, and there is, it does play a, a promo video here. I think this might be Yosemite actually. Yeah, because this is when they like just made the, the visual changes and everything. So it just kind of plays that. You can just click to get out of it. And then you have to run this to install the pictures, which is just another terminal command. So yeah, it's looking really good. Uh, one other thing I want to touch on are the additional things you can download from Macintosh Garden alongside the main DMG file. These two folders over here are actually for if you already had Leopard installed and you just wanted to update it instead of installing Sorbet Leopard in its entirety. So you've got the graphics drivers here. You could go through here and uh, install those. You also have Sorbet Plus, which contains three applications, the updated mail client, printer drivers, and the Sorbet app store that we saw down here. We've also got documentation here. We can open up the change log. And this is a list of all the changes that have been made since the initial version was released. The supplementary update, as of right now, according to the changelog anyway, this modifies the default playback resolution in NVIDIAS, which is an alternative front end for YouTube, uh, from 720p down to 360p. So we'll get this, you just double click on the .command file. Yeah, we'll enter yes and enter our password and it will do just that for us. There you go, update complete. So yeah, we'll go back to our, actually I guess we can take a look at the PPC store here, because this is similar to the Sorbet app store. It has a bunch of PowerPC applications and this actually will just download the DMG file for the respective application right to your desktop. Well, actually it's not doing that. I'm trying to download, I've gone through here and tried to download like most of this stuff and it's not giving me the DMG on the desktop here. And I'm starting to think that maybe they disabled this to avoid confusion with the app store that they added because this app store, the Sorbet app store was added in revision to uh, 1.5 which was introduced, I think, back in December 2022. Prior to that, the PPC store was the built-in app store, and I guess they just wanted to make their own. So they uninstalled this, and it, it just reinstalls when you get 
the uh, theme because that comes with Leopard Rebirth. So I'm guessing that they probably did not intend for you to still use this store. Yeah, we'll go back to the tools here because there, there's a bunch of other stuff. So that was appearance. Actually, there was one more thing in appearance. That's under iOS. You do have um, the iOS desktop pictures. You can install that. There's a terminal command here or a script rather. Going back into the tools folder here, the demos. So these are a bunch of OpenGL demos. Uh, they are pretty nice to see running here. And it kind of gives you a look at the level of performance that you can expect to get out of the system. So you can open up a couple of these. Maybe we open up all these at the same time. That sounds like a great idea. <laughs> this will definitely start to put some stress on the system here. In fact, let's get, uh, oh yeah, it's it's already kind of having trouble. Of course, you should not do this. This was not really, <laughs> it's not, you're not supposed to run all of these at the same time, but of course we don't do necessarily what you're supposed to do uh, on this channel. Yeah, uh, I, I can't really, <laughs> I can't move around the dock super easily. It's definitely not going to be able to handle this super well, but you've got some demos in here, which is nice. And you also have the two, uh, well, one of these is official. You've got the Snow Leopard Welcome movie, which is also the Leopard Welcome movie. You also have this unofficial Mountain Lion Welcome movie, which if you actually search for Mountain Lion Welcome movie on YouTube, I think it's the first result. Because I was looking at this off camera, I'm like, I don't think Mountain Lion had a welcome video. Well, it didn't. Somebody made one, though. Uh, under Doc here, so we can switch it back to 3D if we want. And basically, these are, I mean, this is nothing like exclusive to Sorbet Leopard. These are just terminal commands you can run in OS X, but they've made these scripts here to make it a lot easier and you can also change the minimization effect uh, from the genie one here we can set that to the suck maximization effect or minimization effect and now there you go so it's kind of like the genie effect but a little bit different so yeah nice little hidden dock minimization going on there uh, you also have dashboard. Um, you can just quit out a dashboard and function. Uh, this is a, this is neat if you only want. I mean, there's not really a purpose for this for most people, but you can hide all of the pinned applications and only show active applications in the dock. Yeah, there you go. Finder, you've got a few modifications in here. First of all, the expose blob, which I didn't even realize this was a thing, uh, even hidden in macOS, but. This is a little blob when you click show here, it will show this little blob that you can click on the desktop to open up Exposé. You do that, and there's Exposé. Boom. It's a pretty large blob that you can move around. And yeah, I, I did not realize this was a thing on macOS, but there it is. We can just hide it because that is pretty freaking large. Um, you also have hidden files. You can show or hide hidden files. You've got some maintenance stuff as well. You've got periodic scripts. You can clear different caches, user cache, library cache, system cache. Uh, yeah, if you want to do that, there it is. Peripherals, bonjour, you can enable or disable that. You can enable or disable iOS device communication. With the magic mouse, you can uh, disable or enable momentum scrolling on that. And RAM disks, this is actually pretty useful. You can create RAM disks just like on the fly. They got various you know, different sizes here for you. So maybe we wanna make a 64 megabyte RAM disk. Let's do that. And there we go. So there's our little RAM disk and we can just eject it uh, when we're done with it. You got Spotlight stuff as well. Spotlight has been disabled by default, which is useful because of all the indexing that Spotlight does in the background that slows down the system. So that's why they've disabled it here. But if you wanna re-enable it, you can do that here. And there we go now spotlight is back and it's gonna start indexing stuff though there is index uh, tools here um, so you can just disable indexing entirely which is nice uh, if you don't want to have it indexing in the background all the time last but not least is system you can disable or enable beam sync you can go into quartz compositor here and turn off window shadows which is nice uh, for, for performance here if you want to get rid of those and I'll let you see how the window looks uh, once the terminal command runs here and there you go, got rid of shadows, so that will improve performance a little bit because it doesn't have to render those shadows, obviously. And you have a universal ad blocker, which enables an ad blocker across the entire system. And hey, speaking of ads, now's a great time to talk about today's video sponsor, Linode. You know what's better than Sorbet? Pretty much any flavor of Linux. And with Linode, you can run your own Linux-based virtual machine to help you scale and deploy all kinds of applications. To put it simply, if it runs on Linux, it runs on Linode. Their worldwide network of data centers are equipped with enterprise-level capabilities like load balancers, object storage, and Kubernetes. And their predictable, no-lock-in pricing means that you can start small and upgrade to a different plan whenever you need. For the past two decades, they've been making cloud computing a 
affordable, accessible, and simple, leading companies of all shapes and sizes to trust them with their cloud computing needs. And they'd love to have you try them out. So as a thank you for watching this video, if you sign up for a new Linode account by clicking my link down below, you'll receive a 60-day $100 credit to give them a test drive for completely free. So whether you're looking to change providers or just getting started with cloud computing, be sure to check them out. And huge thanks again to Linode for making this episode possible. That's about the best ad segue I could have hoped for. But yeah, I mean, those are all of the additional things in the Sorbet Tools folder. And yeah, overall, it's just it's just a really nice collection of, of a bunch of improvements and modifications for Leopard. And also, if we go to About This Mac here, just to briefly show you this, the Leopard Rebirth program modifies the About screen here into the Sierra style. Um, and yeah, the, the theme does say Hi Sierra in that folder, but it is, I mean, Leopard Rebirth is specifically mentioned Sierra on their website as the OS version is trying to mimic. So yeah, I mean, I would definitely recommend checking this out, guys. If you have an old G4 or G5 Mac, uh, just give this a try. I mean, install it on, on a separate partition and uh, just mess around with it. It's a lot of fun. I've been having some fun going through this off camera. And um, I guess we should also enable, the one thing I realized we haven't done yet is we have not enabled dock magnification, which is like a cardinal sin on Mac OS, at least for me. So we got to go to dock here and turn that magnification way up and make the dock size like super small here. And there we go. Oh my gosh, that is like so freaking smooth. Yeah, it's 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 really, I mean, performance-wise, I've definitely noticed a performance boost over just regular Mac OS X Leopard. And I think having Spotlight turned off, even just indexing turned off, really improves just because I have to do that all in the background all the time, um, which is great, of course, because it frees up the system resources. And yeah, I mean, that's really all there is to say about it, at least that I can say in this little demo video. So if you guys, again, if you want to check this out, I'll have the link down below. But either way, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, all that good stuff. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.